those whitefish have taken everything from me. But Levi and I are gonna go get some kind of measure of revenge. We are armed to the teeth, so I guess it's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, Banks Lake Whitefish Catch and Cook. Hey, Blake here. So Levi and I are gonna go head to Banks Lake. We're about to check into the hotel room. Ron Jones, longtime viewer of the show, asked about a catching cook for the Lake Whitefish, so I'll see if we, you know, can't get enough to do one of those, uh, just to make it interesting. So get a whitefish, see uh, some different ways to cook it up in the kitchen. All right, it's probably gonna be dark by the time we get there to the lake, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over my uh, setups. So I did an episode, you know, where I caught one and I wasn't prepared and I asked for advice from uh, the viewers and I super appreciate everybody coming through and a special shout out to Oleg and Show because uh, they went really deep and thoughtful with, with their advice and it, uh, I think it's going to be super helpful uh, to help me find success in uh, this video. So here, I'm going to go over both my rods. Here's the first one. It has a spring bobber on it and then I have a corky, a strike indicator. That's how I saw me get the, the bite on that last one. And then this is kind of like... I believe what Oleg told me to do. So it's, uh, you know, I'm run, running eight, eight pound test. Then I got one swivel, some leader. I got a sliding weight. Now this was, this was, uh, oh, you know what? This isn't the Oleg rig, the other one is. So this one actually on the bottom, I have it going down to a weight. So, you know, this, then weight, boom, you know. And then uh, what I, ha I have it off, coming off the side on this rig, the hook. So the, the hook's kind of free floating. I'm using a rock weight, which I do like to use the natural weights. My thought is if I get this just off the bottom, you know, so it's standing like this, you know, kind of like on the bottom, that with it, this, the kind of lack of density on a rock weight, that if this gets pulled, I'll be able to see it on the corky. I'll be able to see the vibrations easily. We'll see if that pans out or not, but uh, this is actually, indeed, this is actually, this is kind of what Oleg told me to do, but not quite. My second rig, I believe, uh, it is that more or less, so I'll go grab that pull. So Levi's family recommended this method. Uh, so it's a bobber, and this is a slip bobber. The the thread is uh, up in the up in the reel, but you know bead stop and like I say, thread in the reel. Here's the slip bobber. Go into a swivel, and then the bot. Then after that, it is the the rig that only uh, recommend I use. So it goes down. You know I got this leader here, maybe a maybe a foot and a half a leader. You know I got a slidey weight there. I got a bead there, just a, this is a bead stop, like so I usually don't like swivel on swivel. And then, then after that I got my, uh, my leader to my hook. So you know, this will rest like this, you know, uh, again with the lead hopefully ba barely being on the bottom. I don't have a strike indicator on this pull. So with this method, you have the slip bobber and you have it at the hole, not touching one of the sides. So you know, you see it there. So basically the bobber is going to act as the slip bobber. You stand that weight up and you have, uh, you know, you set the slip bobber so that it's just barely got tension on it, you know, but it does have tension, you know, between it and the weight on the bottom. And then if the bobber moves at all, you yank it. The thing I like about that is you don't have to line watch. I don't have to look at my tip. I don't have to look at my line. It's actually quite okay to have some slack in the line between the bobber and the tip of the pole. So two methods, you know, going to try here. Uh, we're going to see what's good. I believe Levi's using something kind of in the middle of those methods. So I uh, look forward to see, uh, you know, see, see what's effective here because uh, this is definitely the most prepared I've ever been for these uh, dastardly white fish. Oh, we have arrived and we actually got some light out here. This is great. So I can actually point where we will be fishing. So that's I believe it's pronounced Twinning Island out there. See some people headed out, some shacks there. There's a little pool that runs there, you know, and there's, a, you know, an edge that's maybe 35 feet deep, and the whitefish kind of just cycle in and cycle around. Hello, everyone. Welcome yeah. to Banks Lake. One side of it, at least. <laughs> yeah, Poser Dave joining us out here. A little Poser Dave outdoor action. Got a little caravan action going out to the spot. Dave has graciously allowed us to uh, go in and out of his uh, pop-up shelter if we need to, so that should make the night a lot more enjoyable. All right, so we're in among the group, but I want to be right on that ridge line there. So you can see I'm using my Navionics, you know. Uh, hopefully when I check the depth, they'll be about 35 feet, and uh, then we'll be in business.
Yeah, this is like a Thank definitely you. like vehicle quality yeah. ice. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I want to say it's probably at least ten. Wow. I can give you a reading. I've got the marks on my spoon. It's like it's like tin, pretty clear too. You know. Yeah. yeah it's oh, like yeah. solid. <laughs> when it's weird with all this drift snow on top, like, but you can definitely see in there. Yeah. So Levi's set up and uh, trying to bring the white fish to the shrimp. What do you got going on there, Levi? I see a just orb. Got a little corky there, just below the surface. The uh, the idea is, if you see the corky move, set the hook. So is this a slip corky? It is a slip corky. So. You might want to get to the patent office with that one. Yeah. There you go. You see, it's got the slip. The what do you, I don't know what you call that, but the little slip bobber. A little bobber stop there. Yeah, bobber stop. Yeah. yeah. Holding it. And so your is your weight like just off the bottom or just on it, like kind of just in tension? Is that? Yeah. So. It's just underwater, and the weight's on the bottom, and it's a sliding weight setup. So, with a short leader, about six-inch leader. So theoretically, if the the white fish slurps up my shrimp, uh, the line should slide through the weight, and that corky should move. Okay, man, that's awesome. We should see. We should see it, but we'll. Uh, we haven't had a bite yet, so we'll see if it works. Yeah. We'll go turn on the fish finder and see if there's actually anything coming through. All right, I didn't get this on film, but I can see why Oleg's setup is exactly how it is. So my setup that had the weight on the bottom ended up getting my uh, my leader that was kind of free floating all wrapped around it. So I, uh, you know, made it to where now the hook is on the bottom and the weight's just a sliding weight because, uh, like I said, it was just getting all wrapped up, and it kind of makes sense that it would. Oh, got a fish in the hole now, at least. We've been here for a couple hours now and all quiet on the western front. Uh, Levi's definitely got some hits, but we haven't gotten any fish to the holes nor seen any caught. Right up, though. I can't believe how. <laughs> Sweet. Heck yeah, buddy. Man, look at that. He just choked just, it. Just choked it down. He's never coming off there. Yeah, at least somebody got something. Whew. I saw that bite from here. Hey, there we go. Whoa, you hear that ice crack? Alright, I'm back home now. That was a long way to drive. Levi and I were there for one night and <laughs> just came home with the one Lake Whitefish. I was so overconfident. Every time I've ever been Lake white fishing, which is a reminder I'm really bad at, I have kind of felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, this time, thanks to Oleg and Show and uh, Levi's, you know, uh, knowledge from his family on the fishery, I really felt like ready to go. I only saw two fish on the fish finder the entire night. You saw it there in the video, and I caught one fish. Uh, it, I've just never seen it like that. Usually you see, if you have a fish finder, like hundreds of marks, you know, over the course of a night. Uh, they simply were not there. So that was a bummer. But I did get the one, which is the, you know, minimum number for the catch and cook. And I did want, to, oh yeah, I did want to thank also, before I go on, Poser Dave Outdoors. You know, check out his channel if you haven't already. I know he's been on my last uh, couple videos. But... That night would have been so miserable if he did not let us come hunker in his ice shanty. The winds picked up and started howling. Uh, you know, we fished from probably uh, like 6 to maybe 11.30. Would have stayed for a couple more hours. But, woof, if you ever been on Banks Lake when like 20 mile an hour winds start coming through and it's already, you know, really, really cold out, 
Holy smokers. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Dave. You are the man. Uh, you, you really made the trip for us. So I'm going to cover three different ways, and this is going to be a real lazy catch and cook because it's a uh, work night, but uh, three different ways to, you know, do these fish. It's really going to be more of a taste test. So the first way, and this is the way I have, I'm going to walk over here and grab it. The way I've always eaten these fish, you know, I've, you know, I've eaten about five of them now, I guess, is uh, smoking. So this is a piece of uh, Lake Whitefish from my previous video where I photoshopped that crown on myself <laughs> and all that good stuff. But so I'm gonna open this up and just tell you, uh, you know, how it tastes. All right, here we go. So people often complain about, well maybe not complain, but they just state that these are really bony fish and it's true. But if you've never had one, just so you know, it's not like the bones are like all over the place. They basically got a couple of rows of pin bones, so the bones aren't going to like jump out and uh, attack you or nothing. Definitely fish, you know. Mmm. Yeah, that's great. So it could be because it's a professional smoke job, but I'd put this right up there with most salmon. You know, maybe uh, personally for me, sockeye might be the only one that I'd still keep above it, but for as far as smoke goes. But yeah, it's a real nice white flake, light flake in there. It's uh, really quite unique. It's hard for me to, to, to kind of tell you much more um, besides that you wouldn't want to overpower it. So again, I would, if you're gonna smoke this, I'd recommend a, a wet brine for sure. Here, I'll put up a little, like the simplest wet brine recipe in the world right here. Uh, you know, then you can add pepper to taste or a little garlic if you want. But uh, yeah, you did, and, I, and I, I probably wouldn't even brine it for that long. Usually, you know, I'd brine a salmon overnight. I don't know if I'd want to brine this for more than five or six hours just because you wouldn't want to cover up the, the flavor. Again, the delicate flavor of this white fish. Kind of think walleye almost. And they really don't, again, I can't describe it that well. It's not like they taste just like a walleye or anything, but it's kind of that level of delicacy where it's like delicious and you just don't want to like uh, overpower it. All right, now for the fish I have now. Uh, here's the actual fish, what it looks like pre-cleaning. So you can see beautiful fish. I mean, they are just gorgeous and they're so bright. Uh, I think I'm gonna start calling them like white trout or night trout or something, because they are salmonids. Uh, I feel like white fish is kind of a cop out of a name, you know? <laughs> I feel like they're so much cooler than that. I have uh, some a perch that I need to deep fry as well. I'm just gonna use some McCormick fish fry, which again, I recognize is perfectly lazy, but I've got some fish to fry here. So I'm actually just uh, gonna take one of these two fillets, cut it in half, Probably put that back half in with the perch, and then I'm gonna bake the other part, and then I'll but then I'll see what I want to do with that that last piece. And so here's one of those fillets. You know, I say it smells fishy. I don't know how else to describe it because it really doesn't. Like when when I say fishy, it, it almost seems like a pungency type of smell. Ah, what is that smell? I was just deboning the fish, which did, didn't take long at all. It took a couple of minutes, so I just took all the bones out of that fillet and I figured out what they smell like to me. They smell like cucumbers. Now I know that seems really weird, but that is the smell that I am, that you know, it's kind of a cucumbery smell. I'd love for you to catch me in the mint <laughs> about what you think a whitefish smells like if you, if you eat whitefish. I'll often put my fish in milk, you know, to get rid of the fishy taste, but I don't want to do that with, with this guy because it is such a fresh taste, like I said, and so delicate. So there you go, it's the light one coating of breading. I got some perch already frying from the trip, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, add it in there. Alright, so we got some perch on the right, and we got that just little tail section of whitefish on the left. So I guess I'll do a taste test as well, the perch versus the whitefish. I tell you what, I'm going to start with the perch, because you know, it's, a, it's an old familiar, it'll kind of get my palate straight, so here we go. This was the nicest, nicest perch of the trip. Mm-hmm. I swear, perch is one of those fish that's like so much better hot. <laughs> that's very good. I don't know if old white fish will be able to stack up or not. So there's just a piece of that white fish. Ooh. Hmm. It's different. They're in the same ballpark. I'm not gonna tell you it's blows away perch. Hmm. <laughs> Another bite is warranted. My honest assessment is this. I put it a little above perch. I don't put it as high as walleye, but it's close. And I think part of that reason is, again, it's such a delicate flavor. 
like I say, to my uh, senses, it at least smells kind of vegetable-y in a weird way, and that's kind of destroyed by the frying process. You know, it's great. It's fried fish. It's fried white fish. You cannot miss. It tastes great, but um, I, I would give fried, fried walleye a little advantage. However, again, that's because maybe I've destroyed some of the flavor. So let's go ahead and uh, rectify that now. So I have this, uh, the bigger piece of that other filet sitting in this baking dish, and I am going to just do a very basic lemon butter uh, with some spice on it in the oven here. Cook it for 15 minutes, see how that comes out. That should leave the flavor a lot more intact. All right, I'm gonna melt a teaspoon of this here butter. I'm going to take this here butter and add a squirt of lemon to it. There we go. I wish I had some real lemons, but unfortunately all out. All right, now I'm going to go go ahead and brush on that lemon butter mixture. Again, because it's so delicate, I don't want to just drown it in it. So let's make sure it's thoroughly uh, coated here. I'm sure this is going to have some people yelling at their screen, but oh, I just love dill on fish. So I can't resist, especially because it's already kind of vegetably smelling. So I'm going to give it a light sprinkling a dill. Uh, some people do not like dill on fish. I probably put dill on my fish more often than I don't if I'm baking it. Alright, there we go. A little thick perhaps, but what are you going to do? Now I'm just going to pop that into the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees. And that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit for any of my Canadian viewers, just so you don't think I'm uh, like, you know, throwing it into a volcano. <laughs> Alright, just pulled it out of the oven. going to flake it with a fork to see uh, how it's looking. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, oh yeah, it's flaking right apart. All right, moment of truth. Whoa, whoa, it's hot. That is super, super, super duper good. That was so good, I'm gonna have another bite. A disgustingly large bite, that is. <laughs> so that is really good. We have a winner, I am so shocked. Usually fried fish is just the way to go, but you know, I would say it goes baked, smoked, and fried when it comes to these white fish. When I was a kid, you know, I grew up in Centralia, and we used to fish sturgeon out of the Chehalis River back when you could keep two or one a day. And that's what this reminds me of with that butter lemon on it. We used to call it poor man's lobster. We'd just ch chunk up the sturgeon and boil it. Uh, and then you'd, yeah, you'd dip it in butter or put a little butter on it. That's what this tastes like. It is like a nostalgic taste to me, even though I've never had it that way. So, yeah, Lake Whitefish Delicious. I'm even more determined now to actually have a day where I just slay. Uh, you know, all of the season it's going to start heating up. The weather's going to start heating up, but my heart's just going to get colder because I am. Uh, I just got it out for those whitefish, and they've made a monkey out of me for the last time. So thank you so much, and see you next time on Washington Fish Quest.